Hello everyone, can an oscilloscope be inexpensive but at the same time convenient to operate and have good characteristics? Until recently it seemed impossible, because an oscilloscope is a rather expensive device. But some time ago, FNERSI released such a portable oscilloscope so 152 inches. It is inexpensive and is now also sold at a discount. But it has pretty good characteristics. So it will be very comfortable to work with it. In the description below this video, I will leave a link by clicking on which you can get acquainted with this device in more detail and, if desired, purchase it. Now in this video I will test what he is capable of. A portable oscilloscope from FNERSI is sold in such a bright box. Its model is DSO 152 inches. Its main characteristics are listed here. And here is the complete set of this device, the oscilloscope itself. The strap. The probe. There are clips on one edge and an MCX connector on the other. Also included is a USB Type-C cord for charging the device and the user manual. Along with this oscilloscope, the seller also sent an ordinary oscilloscope probe. The kit includes marking rings, tips and a screwdriver for calibrating the probe. The probe is quite standard and with soft wires. BNC connector with calibration screw. An adapter from BNC to MCX is attached to this probe. There is a 1x10x divider on the probe. First, as usual, let's look at the characteristics of the device specified in the instructions. The instructions are in four languages, Chinese, English, Russian and Spanish. First, a brief description of the oscilloscope is given. Then the assignment of the buttons. The following lists all the functions of the buttons. On the next page, the technical specifications of the device. The sampling rate is 2.5 mega samples per second. Of course, this is not very much because the higher the sampling rate, the more accurate the waveform on the screen will be because the device will be able to make more samples or more points in one second. But even with such a sampling rate that is 2.5 mega samples per second, the waveform will be quite accurate and it will be possible to already have a definite idea of the waveform. By the way, a little earlier in the instructions it was noted, here in this place, that the oscilloscope has a sampling rate of 10 mega samples per second in real time. Therefore, the waveform will be quite accurate when measuring. Next, the bandwidth is 200 kHz. Of course it will not be possible to check high frequency devices using this oscilloscope, but for most tuning repairs, this bandwidth will be quite enough. Sensitivity that is, vertical sweep, from 10 millivolts per division or per cell to 20 volts per cell. This is a very good indicator. Then, horizontal scan. 10 milliseconds per division to 50 seconds per division. The voltage range is 40 volts or 80 volts from peak to peak, but this is without a divider. With a divider, the voltage will be 400 volts and 800 volts from peak to peak. Trigger method, automatic, normal and single. Connection method, AC, DC. Screen diagonal 2.8 inches, USB charging 5 volts and 1 ampere. Lithium battery capacity 1000 mAh. Test signal meander frequency 1 kHz, 50% filling. And the weight of the device is about 100 grams. So, judging by these characteristics, it is obvious that this device is not a professional oscilloscope, and given its low cost, this is quite expected. Nevertheless, using the ZO-152 oscilloscope, it is possible to make fairly accurate measurements of the input signal. Here is the oscilloscope itself.
It has a very compact size. Externally, I really like this device. Convenient location of the buttons, a pleasant combination of colors. There is a stand on the back side. In the upper part there is an MCX connector for connecting the probe. Then the output of the test signal is rectangular in shape and with a frequency of 1 kHz. A joystick for selecting and configuring certain functions of the oscilloscope. On the front side there is an auto button for automatic adjustment. Then the selection of measurement modes. Increase and decrease of some parameters during measurements. A button to start and stop the waveform. At the bottom of the screen there is a button to turn on and off the oscilloscope. On the left side there is a Type-C connector for charging. A charging indicator and a reset button. The following information is displayed on the oscilloscope screen. There is a trigger mode at the top of the screen. The auto mode is currently selected. You can use this button to switch modes. Normal mode and single mode. The next icon is a display of the waveform along the decline or along the front. Switches by long pressing the mode button. There are five indicators at the bottom of the screen. The first of them is a vertical sweep that is, a voltage per division or per cell. To change this value, you need to use the joystick to select the appropriate item and use the up and down buttons to change the value. The next item is the divider, X1, X10. When changing the value on the oscilloscope that is programmatically, you also need to select the corresponding value on the oscilloscope probe using the switch. The next point is the horizontal scan, that is, the time is one division. Next, AC, DEC, that is, the closed or open input of the oscilloscope. In AC mode, the capacitor at the oscilloscope input cuts off the constant component of the signal. When DC mode is selected, then there is a constant component in the signal. The fifth point shows whether the waveform is started or stopped. It's stopped now. You can use the run button to start it. The baseline is displayed on the screen itself. And this arrow shows the trigger voltage. Now let's check this oscilloscope in operation. First, I will connect the probe to the test output. As you can see, the signal is not exactly rectangular. There's a splash here. Now I will switch the divider to X10 and try to calibrate. It turned out to be a practical meander. The vertex is slightly cut off, but it is close to a rectangular signal. Now, with the help of this generator, I will send a signal to the oscilloscope and see how well the indicators match. By the way, to enable additional signal parameters on the screen of this oscilloscope, you need to press and hold the run button. Now the screen additionally displays the maximum and minimum values, RMS, peak to peak voltage, frequency and fill. So, the signal frequency is 1 kHz. The voltage from peak to peak is 3 volts. Here on the oscilloscope we see exactly the same values. The frequency is 1 kHz and the voltage from peak to peak is almost 3 volts. I'm going to increase the frequency now. 10 kHz. The oscilloscope also shows 10 kHz and a peak to peak voltage of 3 volts. The signal frequency is 100 kHz. The oscilloscope also shows 100 kHz, but the voltage is a little low, 2.75 volts. I will reduce the voltage to 2 volts from peak to peak. On the oscilloscope, the result is 1.83 volts. At a frequency of 100 kHz, the voltage shows a little low. Now I will send a rectangular signal to the oscilloscope, 
The voltage is 3 volts from peak to peak and the frequency is 5 kHz. The device shows almost the same values, a frequency of 5 kHz and a peak to peak voltage of 3.1 volts. The waveform is shaking a little. There are slight distortions, but the signal is rectangular and it can be clearly seen. I'll raise the frequency to 20 kHz. 20 kHz. The peak to peak voltage is also 3.1 volts, but the waveform has changed significantly. There are blockages both on the rise and on the decline, but it is quite obvious that this is a rectangular signal. I will increase the frequency to 50 kHz. You can see the result on the screen yourself. The vertices are rounded and perhaps it looks more like a sine wave. The numbers show 50 kHz. The voltage is 3.8 volts. 50 kHz is the maximum frequency that this oscillator can produce, but even at this frequency, the signal on the oscilloscope is unfortunately too distorted. The instructions say that the bandwidth in this oscilloscope is up to 200 kHz, but in fact even at a frequency of 100 kHz, a rectangular signal will be difficult to distinguish from a sine wave. Let's also look at the triangular shaped signal. The frequency is 50 kHz. The voltage is 3 volts. The oscilloscope has 50 kHz and a voltage of about 2.7 volts. That is, it is slightly underestimated. 10 kHz. The frequency corresponds in the voltage is almost 3 volts. 2.97 volts. Well, as you can see, the so 152 oscilloscope does a good job with a sinusoidal and triangular signal. But there are minor problems with the rectangle. At high frequencies, the signal is distorted. What conclusion can be drawn? The so 152 oscilloscope is not a professional measuring device. But it can still provide fairly accurate information about the shape of the signal and its parameters. Also, the big advantage of this device is its ease of operation and compactness, so that it can be taken with you during any tuning work, for example, when repairing a car. This concludes this video, if you liked it, then click the subscribe button so that you don't miss the new video on my channel, which will appear very soon, I thank you for watching and see you soon.